Hi, I'm Gina. Today, I'm going to be walking you through how to perform entity extraction on a PDF using Pipeline Builder. Before we get started, a quick word from our founder. Discover how Pounder customers unlock more value from Foundry and AIP thanks to our live instructor-led trainings. We are Ontologize, a group of former Palantir engineers who love teaching. We've trained thousands of Palantir users at leading organizations around the world. Unlock the full potential of your Palantir deployment by going to ontologize.com. Today, we're going to be performing entity extraction on this PDF. So this document is a technical report that summarizes several geothermal energy projects and evaluates them using standardized metrics like temperature, readiness level, and resource quality. You'll be able to find it if you search for it by name. Now, let's go ahead and get started. So from here or from wherever you are in Foundry, you're going to hit Control J, and you're going to search for whatever project you're doing your work in. So mine is called Gina Learning Project. If you don't have a project yet, you should make one. So we're going to click on it. And now from here, we're going to hit New, make a new folder, and call this one Entity Extraction. Now that you have your folder, you're going to click into it. And here is where we're going to make our new pipeline. Now, before we make our pipeline, make sure you've downloaded that PDF. So now we're going to hit New and search for Pipeline Builder. So you're going to click on Pipeline Builder. And we're going to call this one Extract Entities. Make sure it's a batch pipeline and then hit Create Pipeline. Now, here we are in our Pipeline Builder pipeline. So from here, you're going to hit Upload from your computer and hit Choose from Computer. And you're going to grab that PDF, so Geothermal Energy PDF. Upload to a new media set. Hit Next. And now you're going to hit Upload. And now we're going to hit Done. Now, I encourage you to go ahead and rename this media set because it can be kind of confusing otherwise. So we're going to right-click, hit Rename, and call this one Geothermal Report. And then hit Save. So now we have our PDF and Pipeline Builder, and we're ready to go. Now, we don't even have to extract the text from the PDF before passing it into the Use LLM node. We can do that straight away. So from here, you're just going to click on Use LLM. And we're going to rename this node to Entity Extraction. So here we are in the configuration for the Use LLM node. Now, remember, we have six different options here. Classification, Sentiment Analysis, Summarization, Entity Extraction, Translation, or an Empty Prompt. So what these six options are are essentially different templates for writing a prompt. Writing a good prompt can be tricky. And so having one of these five base prompts can help make it easier. Now, if you need something really specific, then you can always try out the empty prompt. Now, for this exercise here, we're going to be performing entity extraction. So let's click on entity extraction and talk about what it is. So in general, you're going to use the entity extraction option when there is a specific element that you want to be able to extract from your data. So an example would be if you had a corpus of invoices, maybe you would want to extract the customer name. And so what would happen if you did that is we'd go through and anywhere there seems to be a customer name, given the context, we would be able to extract that specific customer name. So in this document, there's a lot of different elements that we could in theory extract. And so, for example, there's a lot of different case studies mentioned here. So, for example, the Kozo case study, the Chenna case study, and a couple more. There's also a lot of different places mentioned here. There's already two examples of entities that we might be interested in extracting. The other thing that we could potentially extract could be, say, cited studies. So overall, there's a number of different things we could look at here. Let's get to it. So first of all, we have to have the context. And so the context here is geothermal energy. Now, what column are we doing this on? So whatever sort of text column you have or a media reference property. And so in this example here, we have a media reference that represents the PDF. And so that is actually what we're going to be doing our entity extraction directly on. 
Now, of course, if you wanted to do your entity extraction based on, say, page or chunk, then you'd probably want to parse your PDF first, blow it up into its different pages, and then proceed. But in this case, we're just going straight from the PDF. Now, what types of entities are we extracting? So one entity, for example, can be a place. Another entity could be a project. Another entity could be cited paper. Now for the model, the default is Gemini 2.0 Flash. Let's try it out with that. And now we're gonna hit Create Prompt. So by sort of filling out this template, what it did for us is generate a prompt. So you'll see here that we have instructions, so kind of the system prompt, and then the input data, which you can think of as the task prompt. So here we have the system prompt. So in the context of geothermal energy, your job is to extract the entities from the text in the following user message, according to the given output schema, no explanation. And so here, the input data is media reference, which represents our PDF. And now the things that we're extracting are place, project, and cited paper. Now for the output column, let's call this extracted entities. Now, the last thing that we're going to do before we finish, and we also could have done this in the prior step before we got to this page, is you'll see that the output type is a struct. That's good, that is expected. Now, the problem is with these entities, place, project, and cited paper, the output type is currently a string. Now, the problem with that is we're only gonna get one value each for place, project, and cited paper, and we don't want that. So here for each entity, if you only want one extracted entity, you're gonna change the output type from a string to an array. And it's gonna be an array of strings. And here are an array, and once again, an array. And the output column is still called extracted entities. And now you're gonna hit apply. If you see this, just hit apply and delete. And close. Now let's give the preview a second to load and we can see how this turned out. And here we have our result. So you'll see here that we have our resulting struct. Now, if you wanna take a look at this, if we hit view cell content, it's gonna show up here. We can also close the pipeline output section for some more real estate. Okay, and so here what you can see, we have a struct of arrays. And so good news is it's not gonna be difficult to deal with this output. So let's go ahead and parse it. But if we just take a preliminary look at the results, you'll see that we have these projects and they mostly look pretty good. And for the cited paper, seems like the model had a pretty easy time with that. So we have a list of our references here. And then for the places, uh, can confirm these are all places that are referenced in this paper. So let's close this and let's go ahead and parse that response. So from here, we're gonna hit transform. And now we're just gonna search for extract many struct fields and the struct is going to be extracted entities now for the locators we have place project and cited paper and this will be called places and this will be called projects and this will be called cited papers and now we're going to hit apply and let's preview just to see what we're working with so you'll see here, now we have three array columns. So places, projects, and cited papers. Now at this point, you have a choice as to what you do with these arrays. You could explode them, or you could say this is good as it is now and just deploy the output as a data set. So we're gonna do the latter and let's go ahead and do that. So make sure you've applied and you're gonna hit close. And now we're gonna hit add output new data set and we'll call this geothermal report with entities and now we're going to hit save and deploy and then finally deploy pipeline note that you may need to import some references but once you do that you're going to be good to go ahead and deploy and once your deployment finishes you'll be able to go ahead and use this data set just like you would any other sort of data set in foundry or you can always go ahead and back an object with it and that concludes our tutorial. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this helpful. Let us know what you want to see next in the comments.